All right, hello and welcome to another Stopping Socialism video. I'm Donald Kendall, joined as always by Justin Haskins. How are you, good sir? I'm doing so well, Donald. So well. Yes, you're always doing well when we're talking about stories that revolve around your favorite, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's the best. She's a, <laughs> she's a national treasure. <laughs> That's right. And this story is just one of the best stories that's revolved around her. Uh, so I've got a bunch of notes from various different articles, but the one that I've got pulled up here is the New York Post. AOC owes $2,000 in unpaid taxes from failed business venture. So again, reading from various articles, not specifically this one, uh, they talk about this story of how Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez back in like 2011, uh, she tried to found a company called Brook Avenue Press, a publisher of children's books, which the freshman congressman founded in oh, 2012, not 2011. So anyways, she racked up when she was trying to start this business, a tax debt of $1,800, which she did not pay. And which has since grown because of fines for not paying up to above two thousand dollars. So this story is starting to get play again, uh, which is pretty funny. And uh, so yeah, it's it's like just right off the top, Justin. What do you think? Well, I mean, there's just there's just so much here to love, right? I mean, for starters, we've got uh, we've got AOC not paying her taxes a person who spends all of her time complaining about people trying to get out of paying taxes. Um, I think that's pretty hilarious. I think it's also amazing that we didn't know about this. Yeah. Um, considering, you know, she's always railing against Donald Trump. And I think maybe rightfully so about not releasing tax returns. You know, I've never really talked about that, I guess. Um, it's kind of weird. We've never talked about that, but uh, Donald Trump obviously has not released much of his tax return information. Sure. Uh, and apparently neither has she, because how did we not know this, you know, or did she earn so little money at this point in time that everyone was just like, Oh, you know, $700 a year in income, like just forget about it. We don't care. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's very strange. So just right off the top, like those are the things that, that amaze me. You, and then, of course, the fact that she failed miserably, um, I think it's important. Well, more more on that. More on that. Yeah. I do have a little bit more on that failure because it's a spectacular one. But just for some context. So her business um, was started in this like incubator. So there's basically like a state subsidized or no, it was like a New York City subsidized program that was designed to help small businesses in the Bronx. So it was... Um, Part of it or whatever was the Sunshine Bronx Business Incubator. I think that might have been part of the parent company that's, you know, subsidized by the city or whatever. Hold on, wait a second. The mm -hmm. Sunshine Bronx Business Incubator? That's right. Is that like some name that you came up with or is no, that? No, that was it. That's the name of it. <laughs> okay. The publishing house was launched through the Sunshine Bronx Business Incubator. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. But a continue. New York subsidized program designed to help small businesses in the Bronx. This was subsidized through the New York City Economic Development Corporation. So, oh, so uh, corporation. Oh, yeah. So you find these like old a... articles if you look her up from like 2011. It mm -hmm. says the initiative was headquartered in an old converted factory in the Hunts Point section of the Bronx, where entrepreneurs like Ocasio Cortez paid monthly rent, which ranged between $195 to $275 per person. <laughs> so then. Okay. You're, you go through here. so practically nothing for so you go New York here. City. Yeah, there's a there's a quote from her that says, you see a huge return on your investment here, said Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, 22, who recently launched Brook Avenue Press, a publishing firm for books that portray the Bronx in a positive light. Her quote, uh, people pay five hundred dollars an hour for consulting that we get for free by the water cooler, she said in a New York Daily News 2012 article. So despite the fact that she is, uh, you know, being subsidized through this city program, she's getting this, um, what she says is the equivalent of $500 an hour, hour consulting for free. Uh, the company failed to publish a book before the city tore it apart. <laughs> Boy, that's a shame. That's a real shame. I was really looking forward to reading that children's book. Yeah. It's too bad it doesn't exist. They didn't publish one. <laughs> That's amazing. So, <laughs> I 
So I, look, people start businesses all the time and they fail and you know, that's just part of life and whatever, right? Is, you know, so I don't want to be too harsh. I mean, God knows I've, I've started all kinds of things, you know, better than anybody. I do all, I start all kinds of things that I never actually finish to turn sure. into nothing. So, I mean, I, I get it. Um, but I don't take taxpayer money to do it. So <laughs> I think that's why we, she deserves to be ridiculed well, here. Well, what's, what's crazy <laughs> is like her failed book publishing thing might have spun her off into the socialism direction for all we know. This, this failure, this, uh, you know, this private venture failure could have created the AOC that we know and love today. Yeah, you're right. Maybe she was so bitter about that free money she got. And she said, you know, I should have gotten more free money. So here's here's another article. This is from 2012. It says, new bill with double tax breaks for startups. Uh, This is a DNAinfo.com article. It says, when Bronxite, Miguel Sanchez, 33, launched his animation and design firm three years ago, He estimated that he spent more than $30,000 on computers, software, staff, and services. Riverdale resident Mandy Sussman, 43, had to keep her full-time job at the Metropolitan Museum of Art last year to offset the $22,000 she spent getting her online marketing consultancy off the ground. And uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, 22, has shelled out $1,000 since April (laughs) simply to rent space while she researches her business idea, a children's book publishing company devoted to telling positive stories set in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you know what. I, 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 this is great. We're actually we're we're really we're tracking down what the problem was yeah. here. We're really we're honing in on the issue. You know, I, I actually think this is great that she became a uh, a congresswoman because if there's anyone on the face of the planet that likes to, you know, that enjoys recklessly spending people, other people's money, it's members of Congress. And this is obviously a very dumb use of money. So you have no money at all. You're 22 years old, you're broke, whatever. You're trying to start this book business and you don't even know you're just researching. Now I don't even know what that means. You're not writing a, a historical novel about, you know, Winston Churchill or something, you're writing a children's book, you know, featuring animals or something talking about how great the Bronx is or Brooklyn. I can't even remember which one it was, but whatever. The point is you don't need to spend a thousand dollars to rent out a space to just think about ideas. <laughs> right. Like, I don't, I don't know if, well, I don't it, know if she's aware, but thinking about ideas can be done anywhere. You don't need to rent out an office space to think park. about ideas. You could do it. it you could do it at the park. You could do it in your your house. You could yeah, do it on a bench. It's just amazing that this article is like thirty thousand dollars <laughs> for this guy. He's buying computers and software and all that. Twenty two thousand for this marketing consultancy yeah. thing. And it's just like, yeah, I get it. You know, starting a business is a huge investment. I get right. it. And then her a thousand dollars since April simply to rent space. So then again, this true. article is new bill would double the tax breaks for startups. So it's talking about this potential legislation. This is in 2012. It said all the three Bronx entrepreneurs support a bill sponsored by West Virginia Senator John Rockefeller and co-sponsored by New York Senator Christian Gillibrand that would double the tax deductions for new business startups costs, bringing it from $5,000 to $10,000. And then here's, this is the best quote of this entire video. Um, This is from Ocasio-Cortez. It says, You don't really make a profit in your first year, AOC said Monday at the Sunshine Brox Business Incubator at Hunts Point. To get taxed on top of it, that is a real whammy. Oh. AOC was taxed enough already. Yeah. (laughs) Taxes were too high. They're too high. She needs a tax cut. Yes. Yeah. She's looking for tax cuts. Right. That's, that's, you know, look, when you're a small business owner, you know, T- you you know how t- how taxes can cause a lot of problems. It can absolutely be an impediment to startups. I totally agree with AOC. What the heck happened? What happened? I mean, wouldn't you just love to know what went wrong? I would love yeah. to know what she thinks went wrong. Right. You know, like what? The, why didn't the? Why didn't you ever actually publish a single book? You know, <laughs> like why didn't that happen? Yeah. <laughs> like what? Oh, so I have a I have a question because. This is all hilarious and ridiculous, <laughs> mm-hmm. of course. 
Um, but why does she owe money in taxes if she didn't make any money? Yeah, you know, have that, we figured that out yet? That, that's a good question. If you go through this New York Times uh, Post article, it basically says, um, I don't know, I think it was that one or a different article that I was reading that said that, like, in New York City, you're taxed on a sliding scale based on profits. So right. I, you know, I don't know if she didn't make any profit. She didn't sell one book. It's kind of interesting to see that she's owes this money. Um, and I think that like the official statement that her or somebody associated with her is released out there is that this tax money is um, it's unjustifiably owed. It was a mistake or something like that. Um, so that's why they're like they're like um, appealing it. They're appealing that this tax debt. So that's her side of the story. So I'm not entirely sure. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that the government <laughs> made a mistake that in to applying taxes and now she's appealing? So here you have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez appealing to the government saying you guys screwed up my taxes and so that she doesn't have to give money to the government yeah. because she thinks it's unfair. Right. And even when she was back doing, back when she did have this business, if you can even call, I don't even know if you can call it a business. Just sitting around thinking is not a business, no matter how much you pay for rent to do it. It's not a business. Yeah. But if, but let's say that that's, let's just pretend it's a business. She was calling for tax breaks at that point in time. Yeah. So she wanted tax breaks. Yeah. She got free money. Uh -huh. She wasted it all. Right. She somehow owes taxes or doesn't owe taxes, but the, the government's the one that screwed it up. Like this is this is just so unreal. Like this is just so unreal. I mean, it really it really is amazing. It's amazing. It is. This is great. And it just a again like a city, like a state subsidized, a government subsidized thing that helps small businesses. Here's all the you know cheap space for you to run your business or whatever. You know we'll give you all the free advice that you could possibly need. Fails wasn't to enough. A book. Wasn't enough, Donald. She needed more money. If yeah. only those billionaires had given her more money. The two thousand, whatever, however much money she got. How much money did she get? Do we know? Oh, I don't know that. So that's interesting, right? We don't know actually how much money she got. Right. It'd be very interesting to know how much money she got and wasted. Someone should ask her that question. I would too. just love to see the alternate universe where like her business takes off and she becomes yeah. this, like giant success. She becomes <laughs> like uh, JK Rowling or something. Right. The new Dr. Seuss of just Bronx centric. Books. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. And what, a, like a mega and, what a, and what a ridiculous idea for a, for a business, by the way, like writing books, well, okay, kids books right, about well, talking about how great the Bronx is or whatever. So, like it's ridiculous. So this article, uh, it quotes a video from her that's on YouTube, and it's basically like this pitch for her business. And it's like, if you're interested, you know, we need some startup money type of thing or whatever. And uh, so I found that YouTube channel, and on it is like five other YouTube videos of people also giving pitches for their businesses. And they are all the most like pathetic like ideas you could ever imagine. <laughs> it's like a series of SNL skits, basically, and she's one of them. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It seems like the bar to kind of get into this uh, sunshine Bronx incubator or whatever is not very high. <laughs> well, of course not, because they're giving the money away for free. What do they care? Yeah. I mean, it, it's th these kinds of things. Look, uh, you can you can make you can make arguments in favor of, uh, you know, various small business programs or whatever. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of government getting involved in much of anything, but there are people who support these kinds of programs. And I'm not saying that they necessarily can't work, you know, but I mean, to give money to give money for this idea is just a joke. And then for her not to pay taxes in it. See, I'm willing to bet if I had to bet and, and, we're, and if we assume that she's not telling the truth, because, of course, she lies all the time. Um, and we were to assume that actually she does owe this money. I'd be willing to bet that she got this money for this grant or whatever for her business and that that is treated as income. And that she mm. didn't didn't claim it as income right right okay. and then didn't necessarily spend all of it right or something in in a year in one year or something 
And because of that, it's counted as income. She was supposed to pay taxes on it. And she probably figured, I don't, why would I pay taxes on this? It's just money I got for free. Uh, but money you get from money is income. If you bring in money, it's income unless you spend it to offset that. So if I had to guess, I bet you anything that that's what it okay. is. But I, I bet mean, you anything. But this is just like, you know, for every every super villain, uh, every uh, superhero, you know, in like these in the movies and comic books, like they all have their origin story. And like, <laughs> AOC is the, one of the most prominent socialists in like our, you know, political discourse True. today. This is True. her origin story. She tried to start a business and it failed miserably. So she went socialist. That was her breaking bad. <laughs> That was her becoming. Yeah. She's like, you know what? This whole business thing, this is a joke. Yeah. I shouldn't have to do anything. I should just get money for nothing. Right. That was, yeah, you're right. You're right. She AOC's was bitter. Story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just as pathetic as you would imagine it to be. So that's, that's perfect. Oh man. That's All really right. good. All right. Well, that's the type of stories and insight you get from stopping socialism. Yeah. Uh, check out all of our various stopping socialism stuff facebook page stopping socialism stopping socialism tv here on youtube subscribe uh, share these videos we're also on instagram you can find our account there justin any uh last words where can the fine people find you uh at justin t haskins on facebook and twitter all right and we will talk to you later